Hey, so I spent the last three weeks um, making a book nook for in between my huge book collection. It's a Harry Potter themed book nook with the dragon and green gods protecting Bellatrix Vault, if I'm correct. I haven't seen the movies in a long time. But anyway, it's my first ever book nook and I, I, I added some lights. It's, pr it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And of course, I filmed the video because I don't know what else to film, so. Here's a tutorial. Well, it's not really a tutorial. It's just, I'm just showing how I made it. If you want to make one yourself, good luck. Mm -hmm. The measurements for this book nook are 20 and a half by 14 by 10 centimeters. Because that's the height and length of the Harry Potter books I own. So just cut out some cardboard for the three walls, the floor and the ceiling. I glued the floor, the back wall and the right wall together. And I kept the ceiling and left wall separate. So it's way easier to work inside of the book nook. After gluing those walls together, I also made some room for the battery pack of the light string, which will be nicely tucked away under all the rocks we're going to make. I cut a hole in the back wall so you can still get access to the battery pack for when you need to switch out the batteries. The hole did weaken the cardboard wall, so I used some sticks to make the cardboard firm again. What I did to make the rocks on the floor, ceiling and all the walls is tear these foam pieces apart to get this nice uneven rock texture. I glued them on and then before I covered everything in a few layers of modeling paste I made the little temple. I cut out some circles and I also have these six small wooden sticks for the pillars. I glued the pillars on little squares to add a little bit more detail to the temple and I painted some of that modeling paste in between the top circles to get rid of that cardboard texture. Now that you have all the parts for the temple we can paint everything. I started off by painting everything black and after that we're going to airbrush three different shades of dark blue on top of the black base coat. I started with the darkest shade and the lighter you go the less you want to paint. And as you can see the details and textures are way more visible, it looks way more realistic now. I also added some details to the pillars and bottom circle with a pencil. When gluing everything together I made the space between the front two pillars a bit bigger than the rest so there's more room for the flame to go through. Alright, back to the rocks. I covered all the rocks in modeling paste. Play with the modeling paste and your brush to get a really nice rock-like texture on there. It'll be even prettier once you coated everything in a few layers of paint. But before we start painting the rocks, we're going to start working on the dragon. That was very difficult because it was so small and detailed, so I covered a small part of the dragon and then painted a bit of the rocks. I switched between those two so while one of them was drying, I could work on the other one, which saved me a lot of time. So here's how I made the dragon. I started out by making a base out of iron wire and aluminium foil, bending the limbs to make it look like it's actually climbing the temple. Then I started modeling the base parts of the body and slowly added more detail, ending with adding loads of spikes on the head and back. Switching back to all the rocks, I'm going to paint those the same way I painted the temple. I painted everything in black and then airbrushed three or four different shades of dark blue on all the rocks. And it turned out great! Especially for a first try because I've never done this before. Time to paint the dragon. I didn't film a lot while painting it because I really wanted to focus and try to make this dragon look as realistic and good as possible. I started with a light grey base colour and then added darker and darker shades of this beige, 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 um, beige, grey colour. Yes, English. I also added some dark red blood which makes the dragon look like it popped right out of the movies and I'm super happy with how it turned out. So when your dragon is done and completely dry it's time to glue it onto the temple. Use some good glue though because the clay still makes this dragon a little bit heavy. Well now we have everything except for the flame. I used aluminium foil to make the base shape but make it smaller than you want the flame to be though because we're going to add a couple more layers later. I poked a hole through the floor which leads to the little battery pack space and then I pulled the light string through it. You can then wrap the entire light string around the aluminium foil. Try your best to evenly cover the entire thing in light and then you have something like this. So for the flame itself, everybody on YouTube used dyed cotton balls but I worked with cotton balls before and I tried dyeing them before and it's really tricky so I wanted to try using something else. I bought this wool roving which is used for needle felting. Basically what I did is I pulled some of the wool apart and then covered it in watered down mud podge. For some reason I thought that wouldn't stick to the aluminium foil but as you can see it clearly did. <laughs> 
no worries, no panic, it still worked out fine. Now that the wool is a bit harder and easier to shape and model into a flame, I pulled apart some smaller pieces and glued them on top of the lights. Make sure everything is covered and you can see any of the aluminium foil and then that's done. Glue the temple with the dragon on its place and then glue the flame down. I airbrushed the flame a tiny bit to add a little bit more highlight and shadow so it's not just one color. I think this added just a little bit more of that detail we needed. And then we're almost done. Time to glue all the walls together. The cardboard did bend a little bit because of the layers of modeling paste and paint, but it's not too bad. We can still fix that when we glue the walls together. I painted the outside of all the walls black to give it a finished look. And that's it. The book neck is done. I think the end result looks really cool. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. <laughs> so if you like it too, um, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment if you want. And you can subscribe for like a couple of videos a year. I don't know, I'm pretty busy. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video, hopefully. <laughs> okay, bye.